Hey there YouTube, this is Skylar408. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done a video on reloading the 338 Lapua mag and that's mainly been because I've been waiting for bullets. Now I've finally got some bullets in. I've uh, gone ahead and loaded some and we're ready to go. Now when we last left off, I had just done the ladder test. And out of the ladder test, 84 to 86.5 grains was the first accuracy node. So I took that, broke it down into smaller charge weights, shot those, and out of those 85.8 and 84.6 were the two charge weights that had the best groups. So I shot those against each other. Here we have the results of that test. This is at 300 yards just like all the other tests. On the left is the 84.6, on the right is the 85.8. Now 84.6 consistently grouped better than the 85.8. It's moving at uh, 2,557 feet per second. That's uh, giving me two and a half inches average at 300 yards. Now, 2557 is kind of slow for the 338 Lapua, but that'll increase the barrel life and that'll be my target round. So, at this stage, I'm starting to play with distance the bullet is seated off the lands. For the initial start of the test, I was using uh, 15 thou off the lands. <clears throat> factory rounds measured around 75 thou off the lands so I did a little research and what I found out was that the accuracy window for distance off the lands with these bullets is around 40 thousandths so I went ahead and I loaded up three different cartridges all of them with 84.6 grains of H1000 and uh, the first one is at 40 thou off the lands the second one is at 80 thou off the lands and the third is at 120 thou off the lands so we're going to shoot three shot groups, two of each, and compare. And out of that, one should stand above the rest, should be more accurate than all the others, tighter group. And from there, we can start playing five and ten thou either way with the seating depth. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, there's a few new things. I switched from Hornady Brass to Lapua. The Hornady stuff is gone. I had enough with it. It is way too soft. Got to a point where it swole so much when I tried to full length size it, it got stuck in my die, resulting in a busted shell holder and a pain in the ass to get the bullet out of the die, or the casing out of the die, sorry. So, switched to Lapua brass, and also I got a Lyman primer pocket uniformer. Really like that, I'll talk about that a little bit later, I guess. But uh, right now, I guess we're going to get out there and shoot the test. Catch you out there. Okay, so one more thing I want to mention before we get out there. I just got a hold of some new rings and a base from Feral Industries. They are 30 millimeter steel rings. The base is also steel. It's a full slot 1913 Picatinny with a 30 MOA on top of it. Now I love about these rings is they're matched by serial number to each other. They go through the machining process together. That way they're true. So long as they're on a Feral base they're guaranteed to be true. So when I got it I bolted it on my rifle. I torqued down the windage screws on the uh, rings. I slapped some alignment bars in there and it was bang on. I set my scope in, no stick or nothing. So perfect grip, you know, no ring marks on your scope. There's nothing worse than spending 1500, two grand on a scope, pulling it out of the rings for the first time and seeing those little shiny marks. Yeah. One time when I was right beside the barrel there, and <laughs> comes out straight sideways, eh? You were like laying down and like too far ahead? Yeah. Alright, so when we first got off the range, it was snowing and blowing and not very good conditions for shooting a test. So, I brought along a new Frank target I made at work there a couple weeks ago and we decided to burn off a few old Hornady's I had loaded up. And we stuck him out at 500 yards and just cranked a few downrange. Well behind his muzzle now. Another one stuck. 
All the wonders of Hornady. Here we've got our Frank number two. One, two, three, four, those were all with one charge weight. These two are with another. Okay, so we're dealing with some weather today, but we're gonna try and shoot the test just the same. This is where we're at right now with our test. At 40 thou off the lands on the right there, we got 80 on the left. Next is the 120. Trying to wait out the wind there, so it takes so long. So at the end of the day, this is what we got. Uh, I'm thinking 40 thou is looking to be the area to play with. We'll go home and measure the groups and see. Okay, so like I said earlier, it was some bad weather while we were out shooting. That's why there's not too much footage of the shots. We tried to take advantage of when the wind was calmer. But uh, I got the groups all averaged, and we'll go take a look at that. We have 40 thousandths coming in at an average of 1.372 inches. Uh, 80 thou came in at 2.69 inches and 120 thou came in at 1.788 inches. So 40 thou off the land seems to be a clear cut winner here for me. Now that's only 25 thou deeper than the previous test and with that we shaved off nearly an inch and a quarter in group size. These ones averaged uh, 2.563 inches. Now before we go playing in 5 and 10 thou increments, I'm going to take these ones seated at 40 thou out to 500 and see if they hold that. They're at 300 yards, that's uh, under a half a minute of accuracy. So we're going to take them out to 5 and see if they still, see if they group the same. Give you a little comparison size. Here's a loaded round. Okay, so earlier I said I'd talk a little bit about the Lyman Primer Pocket Uniformer. Picked this up uh, a couple weeks ago, really like it, and uh, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so the Lyman Primer Pocket Uniformer. Now what this does, it's got a SAMI specification collet on here, and this will cut your primer pocket to exactly the right depth and shape that it's supposed to be. Makes seating primers a lot easier and it makes cleaning the primer pockets go a lot nicer. So here I've got crudly looking Hornady. That does take a little bit of pressure and there will be some shavings coming out normally. But that's to be expected. See, nice shiny clean. You get the same seating depth each time when you push your primer in and uh, makes cleaning them a lot easier. Now, don't mistake one of these for one of these. It's not the same tool at all, so I'm not knocking the primer pocket cleaners from Lee there. I'm just putting it out there. All right, so that's it for this test. I'll uh, take them out to 500 out now and see how they shoot, see if they maintain that uh, half MOA accuracy. Also, I'm going to bring along the chronograph because uh, 
losing a little bit of case capacity, not very much, mind you, with seating them bullets deeper. And I'll see if that's affecting the velocity at all. So hopefully it won't be that long before the next video. So thanks for watching. This is Skylar408.